Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I'll be presenting to you my final ever design project of my Bachelors of Architecture. Yay! It's been a long three years and I can't believe in that time I have not shown you guys any of my design projects in depth like this before, but it starts today. This is my final ever design project of my final semester of my Bachelors of Architecture. So this is quite big because this is an amalgamation of everything I've learned the last three years of my architecture journey. I remember walking into architecture the first and just knowing like very little and right now I still don't know everything but I feel like I've learned a lot on the way, specifically in software, representation style, and content, and also in the ways that I do work in doing my project. But yeah, on to the beginning. So at the time of recording this, I have just submitted my final ever assignment, so I am technically off the hook. It's been three long years and we're finally here, I finally finished and I am free. Oh my gosh, I finished a whole degree. But yeah, so today I basically have two things to say before I begin. Firstly, so this channel is dedicated to documenting my architecture life as well as my own personal life. And I thought it would be really nice to show you guys the design project in depth of this very final project I've been working on the last semester as a, as I actually haven't done that on this channel yet which is kind of weird to think about and secondly so this video is public so if you do decide to copy anything from this project do know that it is public so you run the risk of plagiarism if you do submit my boards or any of the content related because universities, universities do take plagiarism very seriously so watch at your own risk I wouldn't mind if you guys are inspired, but please do not um, steal my project. <laughs> but yeah, okay, so let's first begin with the brief. So the brief was um, to study the relationship between contemporary and um, regionalistic architecture, specific specifically um, Polynesian architecture in New Zealand. So the site was in Taronga. So Taronga is a is a uh, town in North Island of New Zealand, which is where I'm from, New Zealand, and it has a very rich uh, Polynesian culture. Now this brief tasked us with first creating a Maori space. It has to be water based, so it could be a museum, a memorial, or a cultural center. And secondly, we were tasked with creating a Western Museum, which was in which could function as a land-based exhibition space or any of these following spaces that were provided to us. Um, we were also given the building uh, approximated guidelines, which is 1,500 to 2,000 square meters. So we were tasked to stay within this guideline. However, it is not a strict guideline. We're allowed to go under or majorly over well not too much but you were allowed to go over but the, the the focus mostly was on the relationship between uh contemporary maori architecture and western museum western uh, architecture now now for me when i was looking at this brief one thing that i was really focusing on was uh, helping to create a new um, polynesian experience in tauranga I've been to Tauranga a few times in the past and what I do see is a very westernized little town that's lost all its, well not all, but most of its roots, most of its history, its culturalism. So I really wanted to bring that back and that was the focus of my project. And also, I just really wanted to make something really cool, but yeah. So let's all begin with my presentation. So this presentation is the exact speech I use in my final presentation and as I go on on my speech I will be showing you my actual board. Now um, as for the board itself the presentation style is a mix of digital and analog styles so I walked into architecture at the very beginning of the of my first year only knowing um, analog skills like hand rendering I had no software knowledge but now me, three years later, I have finally picked it up and I managed to use it in this project and I think to pretty good effect. But yeah, okay. Let's get on with the presentation. Now, 
This project is called Revival. Now, Revival means to bring back something that has been lost due to time and other factors. Now, what do I want to bring back? I want to bring back cultural experiences in Taronga. I want to start a change that some might see as too far gone, but I believe can still happen for Taronga. There have been so many layers of modernization and commercialism in Taronga that its Polynesian identity has become masked by these white walls. Now, this is great for economy, however, I guess it's lost its essence, so I want to metaphorically peel back the layers and display its essence, try to expose something new from the past that should see the light again in a whole new way. Now, there's nothing to carry on the annotations, sorry, the connotations of its rich cultural past. I've been to Taronga a few times for trips and all I've seen is a small modern little town with cute shops and great views. What I didn't know was its history and I wish there was something to see that would carry that forward in Taronga as it modernizes. Now onto the idea of carrying. What carries? A bag carries. So I took to being inspired by the Kete Fakairo. Now this is a woven bag that is a staple visual in the Polynesian experience. It's beautiful, it's a labor of love, and it's one of a kind, and that's what my project aims to be. Now in this project, I've created four distinct spaces. Now here we are. Each one relates to a very specific level of Maori Polynesian symbolism. So the first is Mahara Mahara. It is the beautiful memory. This is a public use space and a hub for cultural events and it is my interpretation of contemporary modern Maori architecture. Second is Faka Awewe. It means influence. And this is because it is an art gallery restaurant building that is influenced by Maori architecture. It's a hybrid of Polynesian and Western ideas and is also unique because in my site, it is the only one that's allocated a commercial typology to show the adaptability of the Polynesian architectural ideas. Now, thirdly is Te Faranui, which is an example of historically renowned architecture, of a meeting house, and lastly is the Marae. This is the courtyard whose design is intended to be like the Kete Faikairo, and hold all of these spaces together. Now, this is my side section. As you can see, there are differences in each structure. However, there are elements that tie it together, and one of these elements is the landscaping. Now, I wanted to create a visual element that symbolizes this connection, so I decided the weave would be that. It's the ground that we stand on, and for that reason, I want people to be visually reminded of Taronga's roots. Now, I arranged the ground to be a series of three species of grass arranged in thoughts of interlacing. They are the... Oh, well, the names are here. I don't have them on my list, but these are the names. They each have slightly different tones and colors, and they're also, I found out, perfect for the area. They're easy to maintain, and they do not require constant watering and are hardly grass, a hardy grass that will last. So if you look at this visual style, this is a very long side section of the site. It is 1 to 100, 200 scale, and it is a... T section that I flattened out just for the sake of visualization so you could check all the level heights in relation to each other and also get the first glimpse of the silhouettes of the building, which is very important to establish early in the presentation. Now, onto my first building, the Faranui. Now, this is a very historic building that I have reimagined a bit. I have oriented it slightly towards the northwest direction so that its long eastern face receives more solar energy. The reason why I did this was because I have designed it with a slanted wall as a slanted curtain wall system with a second skin. The second skin is made from interlacing timber slats in the pattern of these four weaves. Now these four weaves are called the Mumu Pae, Kofiti Fakapai, and Taki Tahi. Now, these four weaves create very different levels of permeability between the stars, uh, sorry, between the slats creating internally a very dynamic shadow play, just from the action of the sun rising from east to west. Now, I live in New Zealand, so it's east to west. Um, now, another reason that heavy, heavily inspired my design was the works of Felipe Toei. I was so influenced by his sculptures, which are his sculptural take on the lava lashings. Now, if you guys don't know, the lava lashings are the is a weave used to join. It's a very indigenous way of joining two members together. 
it's made from plant fibers originally. Okay, so it is so interesting to see how he takes this and makes so many beautiful variations, creating a dynamic silhouette with the cantilevered or twisted planes. Now, earlier in this semester, I made these models and was concepting many different alternatives until I settled on this. So I've introduced th this different levels in my design as well as the play of light. Now let's head over to the finally across the street straight ahead into the next building. Next is Faka Weiwei, which means influence. This is my hybrid building on site and very important to me about bringing change. It's not just about very about plonking very finalized buildings on site. But it's also about showing a way to slowly incorporate these Polynesian elements that can be recreated. So, Fakawe may blends the typical form of the building on site, which is this stacked block, with the walls on the northern face being made from timber slats in the weave pattern, as well as the form of the gable roof on top. Now, as you can see, the slatted pattern wall on the north face is there for a reason, as I want light to filter in through the slats and create a very interesting light play in the interior. Also, not only in structure is this building a hybrid, but also in typology. It might have a hybrid Polynesian form, but also it has a westernized typology. There's an art gallery with a restaurant and an office with a loft space. I imagine this being very easy to blend in with the rest of the street. It's Polynesian hybrid architecture in a commercial setting. And this building being commercial is quite important as, com as um, commercial buildings have the most day-to-day -day use for the average person compared to, let's say, the Faranui. The Faranui, you only come in on an invite basis or when there is an event. But this commercial building being accessible all of the time and having these Polynesian ideas in it can help start a narrative of understanding and appreciating Polynesian culture just from its design and that's why I designed this building here in the commercial part of the site along the Strand. Now onto the superstar of the project, this is Mahara Mahara, which means beautiful memories. Now if you see me mention uh, weave patterns a lot and there is a reason. Now did you know that with the Ketefakara, which is the woven bag, the weave called Takitahi is used to weave the base of the bag and the top edge. And these other patterns are used specifically to create the body. As they have different visuals, it can help create a story. For example, since they are weaker because they have larger gaps. So that's why Taki Tahi is at the bottom. To symbolize the base of my building, and as you walk along my structure, seeing the other patterns like Tutu and fucking uh, uh, Ihi, they have more space for apertures and are the visual beauties of Mahara Mahara, and also serve a functional purpose of allowing more light in depending on which part of the building you are in. Now for my floor plan. Now the event space is a larger open space flanked by the 2-2 curtain wall and then as you walk in, you can walk into the left or right, you have the option of entering the cafe or the fare waka. Now which I connected the fare waka to the space as the event space is the perfect holding area before entering the fare waka to explain the process of learning and teaching opportunities and workshops. And it can also be booked out for other purposes. Now, in the second floor and on the exterior, there is a stepped oratory space to tell the story of the stars. And it also functions as a stairway to the office, as well as a great seating opportunity for events held on the marae as it has, less, as it has shade from the building wall. Now, as you can see, each section of the wall has a different pattern. I specifically chose this to correspond to the rooms. Also, the office looks into the interior of the event space and the exterior into the marae. This to me is the representation pocket. This is a representation of the pocket of the Ketifakairo bag, where it looks into the interior and you can look out into the outside as well. The farawaka is similar. It is a pocket on the exterior that holds something that gets used a lot, which is the faka, waka. Oh my gosh. Okay, I just have to say, W H is fa, and W A is wa. I, just, I keep messing it up. It's, it's like, it's melody. 
Now onto some perspectives of this Mahara Mahara building. This is my favorite part. So this first space is called the Oratory Space. Now this is a place for teaching about the story of the stars and it is a place to commune and to mingle. I see this as a very um, public use space, even though it's attached to the main building, I can see it as a great seating opportunity from people from outside on the street to go and just sit there and enjoy themselves. Next is the open event space. This is on the interior and this is meant for public or private spaces and it is uh, for public or private events and it is to celebrate and to showcase and it is inspired by the Kete Fakairo bag. Now when you're inside the building, I really wanted you to feel like as though you're inside the bag looking out because the a reason because the purpose of a bag is to hold very important things and precious things. And to me, the precious things in this building are the people. They're very important to this. Now, if you head over into my elevations, you can see all four elevations of my site. As you can see, they're all very different in silhouette and also of textural appeal. Now, it's very important to note that each of these four walls, I, I spent a lot of time designing the patterns. Um, each section of the building's um, walls are different. So when there are more opening spaces, it is because it is oriented towards the sun and I want more light to filter in throughout the day. And on the spaces that are much less opaque, where the spaces between the slats are smaller, these are spaces that are meant to be private and I don't want as much light to come in as it's a bit more closed off and a bit more intimate and private. Now, if you head over into my last page, this is a very simple technical section detail of my building. Now, very important in uh, Polynesian culture is the act of passing on. Now, what do they pass on? A lot of times it has to do with passing on building techniques. So I've designed this entire structure to be made from timber. It is a largely timber structure. And that's because even though timber can be engineered to last a very long time, it does not last forever. I expect this building to last maybe about 200 years and I really hope that when it does break down it can be taken down very uh, sustainably and it can it's a great opportunity for the forefathers to pass on building techniques for the younger generation the future generations to rebuild it for their purpose and yeah that's my revival project oh my gosh wow okay so that is my final design project um, so I did my presentation about uh, two weeks ago, a week ago, two weeks ago, and I'm, I'm happy to say that it went pretty well, like the critics received my project really well and I got a lot of um, praise from my tutors and the guest, guest crits, which was really nice. Um, yeah, it felt great. It was, it was a really nice way to end off the project. Um, this semester was particularly hard because in New Zealand, um, everyone in architecture had to do their project in lockdown conditions. So we all did our project entirely at home and we presented over Zoom. So I just want to say to all my architecture friends that are watching this, good job. I'm really proud of you guys. I'm really proud of all of us that we did this. And yeah, you should be really proud of yourself. This, this is a hard semester. And if you did your best or you did your worst, just know that. At the end of the day, it all doesn't matter. There's always ways to redeem yourself, but if you did well, good job. If you didn't do so well, you can do better next time. But yeah, that is my project. I hope you guys enjoy. And if you would like to know more about it, just hit me up in my DMs. Keep replaying this if you don't understand anything. I will also link my architecture Instagram down in the um, description below. So I'll be putting up the full um, close-up um, images of this on post on the instagram so you guys can see and yeah enjoy thank you for coming back and uh, hit subscribe if you guys like to see more architecture content or university life or life in new zealand in general but yeah thanks so much and bye, -bye.